The name of this presentation is The Peaceable Kingdom by Edward Hicks, and I will be explaining his artwork. But first, in order to understand The Peaceable Kingdom, you will need some background knowledge on the time period it was created. Andrew Jackson, the seventh USA president from March 4th, 1829 to March 4th, 1837, made different executive decisions and many events happened after he signed certain documents. One very important one was the Indian Removal Act back in May 1830. Many American Indian communities in the eastern United States were forcibly moved to territories west of the Mississippi River. If this act wasn't signed and brought up by Congress, then I think there wouldn't have been such hate given across the United States. Another thing to think about is that America's economy rate was on the rise at this point over land. Edward Hicks was an American painter that was born on April 4, 1780. Hicks eventually became a Quaker, which is a member of a historical Christian group of religious movements formerly known as Religious Society of Friends. And his religious beliefs had a huge impact on his artwork and expressions. An important fact to know is that Quakers were heavily involved in Pennsylvania's new government and held positions of power in the first half of the 18th century before deciding their political participation was forcing them to compromise some of the beliefs, including pacifism. Upon many experiences happening in his time period, Hicks decided to continue to strengthen his beliefs and his faith and gives lots of description in his paintings. In this presentation, I will be interpreting my artwork using symbolism and cultural studies. This is the Peaceable Kingdom in 1822 to 1825, which is the first draft painting. Before Hicks thought about putting in the background with Penn's treaty to the Indians. This picture gives a good description of how Hicks planned to show his viewpoint of the peaceable kingdom with no political background to the scene and less color as well. Also his selection of animals isn't as broad as shown like in the final sketch. You will see that later. You can see in the borders of the picture that it says at the top, the leopard with the harmless kid laid down and not one savage beast was seen to the frown. To the right it says, the lion with the faithling on did move, a little child was leading them in love. At the bottom it says, when the great pen, his famous treaty made with Indian chiefs beneath the elm tree's shade. And to the left finally, it says, the wolf did with the lambkin dwell in peace, his grim carnivorous nature there did seize. Here is the Peaceable Kingdom. Here is the Peaceable Kingdom at its published form, which was shown to the public in 1834. This includes the Penn's treaties in the background. There are a total of 13 different animals shown in this portrait, and each one of them has meaning toward the people they're surrounding. Each animal gave a representation of something, for example, the lion symbolizes power gained through wealth. Also, color makes the nature of this painting look brighter and the greens really pop out to the viewer. Around the time of 1755, the Quakers chose to establish what is called the Friendly Association for Gaining and Preserving Peace with the Indians by Pacific Measures. Over time, Quakers were willing to accept some of the religious experiences that they've encountered in order to build more of a connection. The European Indian joint culture was not the friendliest resolution, but in the past it was a start. Here shows the states, territories, disputed areas, and countries from 1834 to 1836. Gaining land and the way land was divided back then sparked a lot of controversy in Congress. The higher ups were given many proposals to determine what should be done to the parts of the unorganized territory. After decisions were made, Southern Native American tribes were moved to the federal territory west of the Mississippi River. The Chickasaw, the Chocota, Creek, and Seminole, also known as the Five Civilized Tribes, were affected the most from this act. Remember the background from the Peaceable Kingdom a couple slides ago? Hicks wasn't the only one that chose to express politics through his paintings. 
Here's a painting from artist Benjamin West showing a version of Penn's treaty with the Indians. Well, it was oil painted from 1771 through 1772, which is actually eight years before Hicks was even born. This version shows direct detail on this part of history. With that being said, it would be safe to say that Edward Hicks had developed some ideas from this painting. Just look at some of the similarities within both images. When there is disagreement, there is usually violence involved. I for one think that the level of violence shown from the back I for one think that the level of violence shown from back then could have been avoided way sooner. Could this have affected the peaceable kingdom's fate from Edward Hicks? Or would the painting even have been created if some of the events in our history were would have never happened? By just taking a quick glimpse. By just taking a quick glimpse, you might think this picture may show animals as different signs of qualities around an angel. The lion again represents strength, and the lamb a spirit. Hicks continued to display these type of divine qualities throughout all of his artwork. The wolf will live with the lamb, the leopard will die down with the goat, the calf and the lion and the yearling together, and a little child will lead them. Chapter 11, 6 in the Bible from Isaiah. If you go back to look at the animals in the portrait, then you'll be able to see where the author to animal relationship comes in. It is without a doubt that the animal and the peaceful kingdom are used to describe the value of peace in any conflict. After long research, I now feel that the peaceful kingdom is a great form of visual art because of its many animals that describe physical and spiritual feeling of both unity and religious beliefs. In conclusion, the culture of history of the United States in the 1700s and the 1800s has affected the peaceable kingdom and many other paintings tremendously. Therefore, the painting was a symbol of hope, religion, and new order.